Hi. Uh, so recently, uh, we have been working on, of course, Project Panfrost. Um, the goal has been to come up with a set of reverse engineered free open source drivers for the uh, for the uh, set of uh, Mali TXX and GXX GPUs. Um, it's reverse engineered from tracing ARM's user space 3D drivers, open source kernel driver from ARM, and it's all 3D. Uh, a lot of the Mali chipsets will have a separate piece of display hardware that's not necessarily associated with the GPU and they render off into that uh, instead of just having it built in like you would see with Qualcomm or Broadcom. Uh, Quick thanks uh, before I go further uh, to Alyssa Rosenwick, who has done most of the Midgard reverse engineering and driver development. Uh, Connor Abbott, who did the uh, initial Midgard ISA RE and most of the Bifrost ISA RE. And uh, of course, me and uh, Biopen, who helped with a couple of the uh, utilities, including uh, the assembler and our uh, tracer, which I'll talk about a bit more, uh, Panwrap. So we're going to start off with Midgard. Uh, Alyssa knows this architecture much better than me, so I'm going to have them do this part of the presentation. So just move left and right. So Midgard is the code name for ARM's T series of GPUs. Um, I will be calling it Midgard because saying TXXX is, you know, doesn't really roll off the tongue. Um, it, Midgard is used in a huge number of devices. Um, lots of Android devices use it, or as we're more interested in, a lot of Chromebooks use it, including the Rockchip and Exynos Chromebooks, um, which are very interesting targets because the Rockchip Chromebooks, in particular those based on the RK3288 and RK3399, can run using entirely free software except for the GPU. So uh, our laptops are perfect, only thing can make it better is Panfrost. Um, so for Panfrost, we have on Midgard, we have the instruction set reversed. We understand all of the big ideas. There's some, de some details we're missing, but we have it working. And we have a NUR based compiler which supports simple shaders, although increasingly, as you'll see, a little more than simple these days. And similarly, the command stream that is, uh, everything else used for OpenGL ES 2.0 is understood, and we have a prototype Mesa driver. Um, which we will demo later. So let's talk a little bit, bit about the Midgard architecture. Midgard has uh, three different types of instructions, much like most GPUs. Um, arithmetic instructions, lo um, load store instructions, and texture instructions. And within these, each of these instruction types, there is a limited degree of parallelism, um, although it's not entirely clear yet um, how this exactly works. On the arithmetic unit, this is the most complex of the three. And this is d divided into five subunits. Um, Midgard is quirky, to say the least. Um, it's, every GPU is, I think, if you uh, were here for the i965 talk yesterday, you'll hear how that's quirky in its own way. But it's good, I, quirky's good, I mean, that's why we're here. Um, so it's a mix of a scalar architecture, a vector architecture, and something sort of parallel, sort of not. Uh, so the way this works, they divide it into these five subunits, vector multiply, vector addition, scalar multiply, scalar addition, and this general lookup table, which um, the official um, Molly presentations refer to as a vector unit, although it acts sort of scalar, sort of vector. Uh, yeah. And the way this works, it's pipelined. The vector multiplying the scalar addition come first, then the latter three. But in each of these layers, it exhibits some degree of par parallelism. And each unit, as the name implies, only allows certain instructions. So for instance, a multiply, you can only do on a multi one of the multipliers. Um, some instructions like a move, you can do anywhere. So this present, presents a very interesting problem for scheduling because now you have this program, you have some amount of parallelism, some amount of bundling, you get pipeline registers to push stuff between these two stages um, and it's 
not really clear how this is supposed to work. Um, there is a reason why this is the older architecture because it's insane to write a optimal compiler for. Um, but ultimately the goal of the scheduler is just to minimize the number of these bundles of um, just these five units and indirectly to minimize register pressure. So that's the ISA. So moving over to the command stream, Midgard as well as Bifrost, they um, share a command stream, which is very different from essentially every other GPU that we've looked at because we call it a command stream and on most GPUs it is a command stream. You have a stream of commands where you just one after the other change state. We don't do that here. We use these things called job chains. Uh, we call them command streams to stay consistent but there's nothing, there's no commands or there's no streaming so I mean <laughs> you decide if that's a good name. <laughs> and so the job chain essentially has these um, just whole large chunks of the draws are encoded at once and you have a linked list to tie them together and you specify dependencies and the actual scheduling is done in hardware, not usually in the kernel. Within the job chain, you have a configuration of everything you might have in the GPU, uh, ranging from, you know, stencil state to how your, the actual vertices you're sending to the actual shaders. Uh, these are broken up into three different types of jobs as this is a tiles renderer, vertex jobs for vertex shaders, Tile, tiler jobs which configure the tiler. Um, Midgard is like most other embedded GPUs, uses a complex tiling architecture. Um, but the details of that are mostly hidden from the driver, thankfully. Um, and we pass the fragment shader there. And then finally there's the fragment job which just runs all of the fragment shaders and does the write out to the frame buffer. Um, the net result of this is that programming for the Midgard command stream is less, feels less like writing a hardware driver and more about serializing your OpenGL state and passing it forward like just another API, which makes the code a lot easier to work with, although presents its own set of challenges because it's not what's, what's expected from a typical Gallium driver. But with that, let's move over to Bifrost, which shares the com all of this about the command stream is shared, um, nothing about the instruction set because, hey, why not? <laughs> you do, uh, what kind of talk would it be with only one instruction set? <laughs> all right, so Bifrost is a relatively new architecture. It's a code name for ARM's Mali GXX lines of embedded GPUs. Um, since it's pretty new, it's not in a whole ton of devices yet. Uh, pretty much the only uh, device I have currently with one is a uh, high key 960 that runs Android, uh, which has been a little fun to work with. Uh, the uh, shader core was completely mi uh, redesigned. Um, it is very, very different from how Midgard works um, and does a lot of very interesting and quirky choices. Um, it's pretty crazy, but kind of crazy in a beautiful way. Um, and of course it shares the same kernel driver. So we've engineered a, pretty much most of the ISA. There's still a couple parts here and there that need to be done. Um, the command stream for it, while similar, there's still some other parts that were added in Bifrost that we don't exactly understand yet. Um, we don't have a Mesa stub yet, but we are pretty much almost at the point where we can just go ahead and write one. Uh, with the knowledge that we've got. Uh, so what's fun about Bifrost is it's a clause based architecture. You don't really deal with parallelism on your own. In fact, the GPU just kind of handles it for you. You have various clauses that it goes through sequentially and they contain of course instructions and immediates that are unpacked by the GPU at runtime. Um, scheduling uses a scoreboard mechanism. So each clause will have, you know, a scoreboard of dependencies of clauses that need to be executed before the current clause. Um, the other interesting thing which uh, is a big difference from Midgard is there's no real high latency instructions. There are some exceptions to this but it's mostly hidden away in the hardware um, from the user so everything is just executed immediately or at least that's the way it seems. 
So, of course, instructions have three stages. Register, read, write, fused, multiply, add, and ADD. Uh, you have two read ports, one read, write, and one write port, and one const port. Uh, the result of the FMA and ADD stage can be passed to the next instruction, which helps with skipping the register file, uh, leading to less power and less register spilling. There is also four other units. Um, in addition to those, there's the varying interpolation unit, the attribute fetching unit, load store unit, and texture unit. The uh, execution unit interacts with these other units through special variable latency instructions. You'll remember just a moment ago that I said there were some exceptions. That's where the exceptions come in. Um, a good example of this is uh, if you are passing something from a uh, fragment shader, a clause for a fragment shader to the next clause, uh, the final instruction will be a test, which is actually uh, instruction that doesn't uh, introduce latency. But that's going to be the only latency instruction in the whole clause, and it's the only one that you can use in the clause. You can only have one lit special instruction per clause that uh, will bypass that fixed latency mechanism that's normally used for registers. So this is where things get fun. Clause packing is really intense. There's about 12 different formats that are used for instructions and clauses. Uh, about 13 in total if you count the uh, one used for uh, immediates. Um, of course, which format you use uh, completely depends on how many instructions you have, how many constants you have, and as a result, instructions actually end up usually being split between multiple quad words. For instance, you might have uh, an opcode that is, part of it is on one side of the uh, quad word, and then the beginning part of it is on the other quad word. Or, part of it might even be in the next quad word. Uh, they usually indicate this by using various tags that the uh, GPU seems to decode in hardware. Um, so, of course, also sometimes constants are packed in instruction quad words. So you can even have, say, a single instruction with half of a quad word right behind it. Uh, so as for the current tools that we've got, uh, we've currently got pan, uh, pan loader, which is pretty much our main repository for utilities such as PanRap. PanRap is, if you've ever worked with Freedrino, it's very similar to their libwrap utility, where we basically wrap around the system calls that the uh, GL driver makes in order to get a trace of what's going on. Um, of course, we have a uh, Midgard and Bifrost assembler. Um, assembler for Bifrost is a lot of fun to write. Um, there's just so, so much code. Um, and then, of course, we've got a uh, shader runner, which you can use to fire up compute shaders, which we've been using to figure out some of the more complex instructions, such as uh, square roots. Um, and, oh, pardon? Oh, yeah, for Bifrost. Uh, and uh, we've also got shader program disassembler, which, as you may expect, is our disassembler for Midgard and Bifrost. So, Here's, of course, some links. Uh, we actually have all the code available on Panfrost. It's uh, a little difficult to build, but uh, it's been getting a lot better. Um, and we've got some instructions, which I will probably add to the presentation uh, before I upload it, uh, to actually get the driver built and running on most systems. So now here's for everyone's favorite part, demo time. So we actually have a system here, uh, Midgard system, uh, thanks to a friend of ours, which we wouldn't have been able to get otherwise, uh, which actually has Panloader running. We're going to actually show Panloader, or sorry, not Panloader, Panfrost running, and we're actually going to compare it between the blob, and the results are a lot more uh, nice than you might think. All right. So, you ready? All right. Looking up. Uh, that's all right. Um, uh, you might have to hit something on the keyboard first. All right. Uh, yeah. Oh. Looks like it's got it. Yep. Sweet. Right. 
So this board is a Rock Pro 64, which contains a Rock chip uh, 3399 system, uh, system on chip, identical to that used in a number of Chromebooks, such as the Samsung Chromebook Plus, which I personally use. Inside is a Mali T860, which is one of the latest Midgard chips. Um, so we have, the, um, have this running at the max clock rate, and so just for a sanity check with the blob, you can see we have uh, gears running. And I mean, it's the blob, what do you expect? Nothing it's interesting there. Um, it's going at 33 frames a second, which draw your own conclusions, but um, yeah, for uh, Panfrost, we, because we're relying on the vendor kernel driver, uh, we don't have our own way to draw windows effectively, which is why it will look a little funky. But with the same demo, with the fully free stack, uh, including free shaders compiled via the NUR backend, we have, uh, did I, I can't see what I'm typing. One of these days I'll get it right. Uh, hold on. You can see all the debug output on the left from the compiler, and we're going at 161 frames a second. Um, uh, for something a lot more interesting, we, uh, we have about 60% of the GLMark demos working. Um, the main thing we're missing is a implementation of frame buffer objects, but um, GLMark 2, we have uh, for instance, the Pulsar demo, uh, I can't really see what I'm typing. <laughs> Is it yes or true? You can type in the payload and move back. Can I? That would help. Um, this is demonstrating some textures and some rainbow colors, which is perfect for Panfrost, of course. Um, and everybody's favorite cat. Um, here's a feng shaded cat. Um, I don't know, I, I like this demo. <laughs> and that's that. Um, there, for higher geometry, this, we do have the classic uh, bunny demo, which the problem with that, well, you'll see, but it, this is at uh, over 200,000 vertices, so it kind of encounters some bugs, but once it does render, there it is. Um, it kind of pops in after a few frames, but it's progress. Um, were there other demos we wanted to know? Right. So yeah, that's that. Um, but uh, when while we're talking about performance, just for a sec. So if we took say that uh, Pulsar demo, this was at uh, where to go. Let's see how what performance we're getting here, because I'm not really sure. That's 164 frames a second. And with the same demo on the blob on this hardware, we are going to get let's see. All right, sixty seven frames a second. That's you know, at least above sixty, but that's fan for us. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Question? Question? Amazement, wonder. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, nice work. Thank you. 
What uh, you. do you think will be your biggest challenges moving forward to a more complete driver? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? What do you think will be your biggest challenges moving forward to a more complete driver? I guess the biggest thing is making the jump from a uh, proof of concept to a production driver. Um, we have been neglecting the kernel space. We're using we're reusing the same um, kernel as the WAB is using, which is fine. It's all GPL code. There's no free software issue there, but it means that we're rendering into some random window, and it prevents us from doing proper desktops. Um, similarly. A lot of the code is very fragile. Um, it's not, this is where every driver is at this stage in development. It just needs a lot of polishing, a lot of bug fixes, uh, a lot of random parts of the spec that we've been ignoring because they d aren't using a demo but are, you know, will be needed eventually. Um, but, yeah. Any other? Yeah, I would say uh, awesome work. I worked on, on uh, some of the earlier Mali GPUs, and, and this is this is really cool. I'm happy to see this done. Uh, are you looking into doing full GL or just ES? Uh, I think we are pretty much looking into. I mean, it, I guess it really depends if the hardware is capable of full GL. Because absolutely, I mean, we pretty much want to support as much as we can. Um, we're also uh, even planning on coming up with our own DRM driver. Uh, we've got a stub for that currently, but not really, doesn't really do anything just yet. But, so I'll say yes. Um, it's worth noting that we're, uh, we're a Gallium driver, which means we have both the OpenGL ES and the desktop GL um, state trackers going. Um, I have not looked into this desktop one yet because there are a few features that we uh, won't have be able to get it all. For instance, I want to say occlusion queries might not be possible. Um, a lot of stuff I know uh, Fredrino and VC4 emulate, for instance, quads into triangle strips. Um, this is all further down the line because I've just been trying to focus on one API for now and just get that polished. We have another question here. Are you planning to, uh, to support OpenCL? Maybe eventually. Um, the actual, there's not a lot we don't know to get it working. Um, interestingly, Vertex jobs on Midgard, as well as Bifrost, are um, implemented identically to compute jobs. I think the idea is that they uh, make each Vertex invocation. Um, I hoping Connor is nodding his head somewhere out there. Um, <laughs> But I know um, I have not looked into it, and I, again, just been trying to focus on uh, ES 2.0 for now. Any other question? Okay. Thank you very much.